Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, aka Mr. Ping, with another Saturday Soul Faux session of Expression Sessions, where we come through, we express ourselves to you, and I say we, because usually the lovely Kiki is here with me, but we'll get into that in a minute. Well, we come through and we express ourselves to you and you get down in the chat and you express yourself too. Or maybe you have to send us a DM later. We down here at the wonderful Paradox Studios. You know I said every week, Paradox Studios, East 5th Street, Austin, Texas, with the crew, Corey, Blake, and Julian, and Cam probably somewhere around here too. But this is what we getting ready to do, expression sessions, coming to you with the final week of Mindset. Just talking about some things to move forward in your mind and have you begin to break down the program or the things that were said in your mind yet. So just talking a little bit about mindset. And actually, I think today we might just have Murphy's mind beat today. <laughs> we, we, we worked on that in a way that everything worked out okay. We live on Facebook and streaming and everything that we need to do is a okay so we're going to keep that good positive energy going today. And if you see me look away, just know because I'm looking at about four different cameras, making sure that everybody can hear me as well as see what I need to say. But I'm going to focus on the camera that's in front of me that we're streaming through today. Hey, you know, I noticed something the other day, too, and I was watching the video back from last week because it's very rare that I watch me because I'm always critiquing me. It's, it's part of the mindset that's probably set in me and probably – Said in some of y'all too, you know what I'm talking about, it's just things that we go through, but last week I was watching the video back and I was watching how y'all transition from one camera angle to the next, and I'm like, oh man, that's pretty dope, that's pretty interesting, and just looking at the light, and it gave the show, it, it gave it a whole different outlook, it, it helped me see myself in a different way, it helped me not see myself just a struggling artist attempting to make it in the speaking world, not see myself as someone that's still fighting their way through life in school and feeling like you're just doing something on Facebook or YouTube, but start to see yourself for really what the wealth is, like, yo, I spoke this into existence a year or two ago, like, I spoke this into existence to do a podcast, to do a live show, to give back this motivation and this, this inspiration and this energy to help people transform their life, to truly be set free. I spoke this into existence, and now, in my current mindset, it's sitting here before me. Like, do, do y'all, do you understand what that power is like? Have you ever thought back on some of the things that you wanted, that you dreamed about, that you wish you had, and then it all become to come together? It all started to come together. You started to get with the right team or people around you. You start changing the things that you say to yourself. You start breaking down those things that were said to you. You really start to change the things that you said in your mind and what you see for you and what you see about you. It, it was definitely something that I had to go through. So seeing me doing this now and, and going back and seeing it from somebody else's view, uh, I just needed to tell you that you're amazing doing everything that you do, that you're amazing just being you. Because what you do and how you do, no one else can perform it like you. So be careful what a lens that you look through when you see you, because if you look through the wrong lens and then that mindset will say stuck on you. So that's my little intro and we'll get into this and we'll stick on that a little bit more. Um, but let me get into this. God, I thank you for this opportunity to be used today. Give me the words to say to bless somebody in some way so that I don't get all puffed up above myself, but I take you off the shelf and let you use me for my greatest eternal wealth. Allow me to set my mind free to talk and speak clearly to bless someone as you has blessed me. This expression session is where we set yourself free. For you, your universe, your Buddha, your Allah, your God that you see. This is just me talking freely about the mindset that he has given me and how the things that I've learned can help you. So let's get into this. Today I'm not bow tie fly today. Today I'm not bow tie fly today, and I said this one day last week. Don't, don't get used to me doing this. 
Not that I don't like it. I, I enjoy my bow tie fly. It says something different. But I don't want people to get the wrong idea that every time you see me, this is what represents me. Have you ever had that, that episode, say, for example, the first time I met Julian? He's on the camera right now. And I, had, and I just looked at him and, oh, that's all Julian do. He's a camera guy. And then I treat him as such or I approach him as such. My mindset is just saying that all Julian is good for is working the camera, holding the camera, or doing other things. But after sitting here for three weeks, four weeks, and watching that Julian, not only does he work the camera, but he's also like a producer. He coordinates the show. Him working the cameras after he's gotten everyone else's flow in order after he's got camera one in order camera two he's got the light right he's got me right on the microphone then he can go into what his real job is right or one of his many functions right so what happens is sometimes when people see us for the first time they get that you only get a, a chance to make a first impression one time so they get that first impression in their mind and then their mind is set on who they think you should be or what you represent it for them for for them to see right so i'm not bow tie fly today but i'm the same ethan smith aka mr peen I, i'm the same person saying the words that feel something that's gonna mean something i'm the same but we get this vision set in our mind that 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 allows us to maintain some of the some of the negative things some of the hurts some of the pains all because of the vision that stained on our brain and it's like i said before you don't you don't know your name i know julian but i don't i don't know julian last name i don't know julian's middle name i know julian does art i know julian does productions but that doesn't mean i know julian so if i set my mind on julian is just a artist or blake is just audio video or Corey is just lighting or cam is just networking if i set my mind on that with the people around me and the people around you then you'll be stuck and you'll keep them stuck doing what you think only they can do and then you wonder why no growth is happening around you. Could it be that our mind gets stuck on what we see? I, I just said it. It's hard for me to watch me because my mind gets stuck on what I see. My mind doesn't focus on what Julian see or what Trey see or what Cam see. My mind sometimes focus on negative E. I can't believe God is using me. Why? Because sometimes the things that we set before our mind is set in our mind. But when I start to change the people that I see around me who allow their mindset to run and roam freely, I was able to change the things that I seen around me too. Isn't it amazing how when you start to move yourself forward that the universe, God, Buddha, Allah will bring friends and people around you who are looking to move forward too. It's the people who get stuck in their ways, who get set on their mind, who's looking to keep you back in those same time frame, in those same days. All because we're, we're unwilling to learn or do it a different way. All because we're willing to, to, to challenge what the world say. All because we're willing to break down a program that I was set in our mind one day. And I talked about this in the beginning. Your mindset was set in a time before you even understood that your mind could be set. Between the ages of zero and seven is what Dr. Bruce Lipton said. The things, the, the programs, the ideas, the, the religion, the terminologies, all those things were placed in our head between the ages of zero and seven. And most of, most of us carried those phrases, those ideas, those stories, whether they're good or bad, for the next 90% of our life. Never free in our minds to see what's set before us, to, to live our mind right, to reach out that thing to that thing that's calling to you, to, to that gift that you have, what you're supposed to do. But we get stuck on the mind that was set long before you begin to know you. Your mind was programmed for you. And then when you start to find you, people tell you you're wrong for doing what you think you should do. 
For God said, listen to me, you'll see that it's true, the fruit that you bear amongst you. I may not see sometimes for me how I'm blessing the people that hear me or how I'm benefit some of the things that I say. But look of the fruit that's around me. I started doing this by myself, holding my phone. Now I'm doing this with a team with multiple cameras and lights on. All because I believed in what I seen and I set my mind free. And now the fruit is abundantly growing around me. The fruit is abundantly growing around you when you start to set your mind loose and do those things that you say you want to do. I talked about it. I'm not bow tie fly today. I'm wearing an extreme execution shirt because it was something that I needed to tap in. And I needed to say about this too. Something that was said in my mind that I know it helped me so I know it can help you. I want to make sure that I just don't get on here and you hear a bunch of slick words that, that flow through that motivate you. I want to inspire you and I want to transform you. So I got to give something to you that I used on me too to help me really get extreme and execute and find my way through. But it started with the mindset that I had to break down, the B to the BRM, the thing that I've been talking about with you. The, basics, the, the basic mindset that was programmed in us. So what I did, so 2020 was a hectic year for a lot of people. And before I go there, I wanted to say this about the bow tie flying. You know, you are who you see yourself to be. And they, they used to have this saying, you know, look good, feel good. And maybe that's just from my hood. You know, coming up in a predominantly black neighborhood, seven mile west side of Detroit, you didn't come out the house looking bad. That was just that was just what it was. In most minority communities, if you came out the house not looking fresh, you got talked about. It didn't matter what your intellect was. It didn't really matter what your pockets looked like. Well, you needed to have some money in your pocket. But I say your pockets, it didn't matter if you was investing or anything like that. If you was hot right now, if you were shining right now, if you looked good, if you looked the part, then you felt good. As in if to say that the clothes is what made you. And I had to, you know, when I didn't put the bow tie on the day, I was thinking to myself in my mind, like, what they going to say? Are they going to think, wow, he was giving us bow ties all week. What's going on? I'm confused. I, I, I don't see. No, I feel good in anything that I'm wearing. So regardless to what I put on, I look good because I feel good first. And I realize it's not the look that should make us feel good. It's the feeling that should make the look good. It's not the look that make you should feel good. It's not the, the red bottoms, the 10 bottoms, the Air Force Ones, the Doc Martens. I don't know what people wearing nowadays. The Yeezys, whatever you wear. The, 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 uh, the, I know y'all ain't wearing true religious no more. So whatever jeans you wear, skinny jeans, loose jeans, tight jeans, it don't matter. It's not the look that should make you feel good. It's the feeling that you have should make anything that you put on look good. But it's all about is your mindset good when you see you. Do, do you see you? Do you see through what you used to be? Or do you still see what you used to look like so you don't feel so good? You should feel good before you look good. Anyhow, rocking my extreme execution shirt because it helped me to, and, it, and it's going right into the same thing. And we just talking mindset and how to, how to break down that basic mindset that was given to us in our life. That's all we talking today. Make sure ain't nobody said nothing in the comments. That's all we talking today. Um, when I got into coaching in 2020, it was something that I had on my board 2017 that I wanted to do life coaching. But I desperately, desperately, desperately feel like through my bones, I am a speaker. Like I'm supposed to stand up and speak to thousands and hundreds of people. That's just what I feel like my gift is. But coaching for me took my mindset and did something differently. Because as much as I want to speak, I have to learn to listen more in order to truly coach. It's not about you talking all the time, it's about you listening the most of the time and asking the right questions. But what it did for my mindset to change me is I had to coach me first. I had to take this information that I learned and I had to coach me first. I had to break down my basic mindset first. And it wasn't just about where I was at a 40 something year old man in life. It was about getting back with my wife and being a husband and being a father because the last time I was with them, I didn't do it right. 
So when I was alone and I was by myself and I started to find my greatest eternal wealth, that was cool. When I was by myself, but my mindset to, for, for growth with my family, that was still back up on the shelf. But with this program, what it done for me, it helped me to see the, the free me, the loving E, who I'm called to be, the things that help me, the things that build me, the things that shape me and mold me. And in order to get to the best version of we, we have to discipline thee. We have to discipline ourselves and start by learning ourselves. And I said it before, taking, taking your beliefs of what you used to be up off the shelf and seeing what you can be by starting to set your mind free. The Extreme Execution Coaching Program, it helped me. It helped me to, to see that we... We all have four basic distinct characteristics that shape and mold our life. This research was done, conducted by Dr. William Marstow back in 1928. And uh, Marstow, if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, back in 1928, right, he conducted this research. And all just, you know, 90% of mankind have four basic individual characteristics that we possess. And how they described it was the D, the I, the S, and the C, which is DISC assessment, which stands for Decisive, Interacting, Sociable. And hold on, I'm messing the last one up. I am, and I don't want to give you the wrong, the wrong information because I have it sitting right here in front of me. And that'd be me and my high eye. That's my feelings and my emotions. I like to paint the picture, but I know it's other people that's listening need to get the, the exact facts. So, again, in my learning and my coaching and switching my mindset, learning to slow down and knowing that it's okay for you to slow down and go back and do it over. There, there's nothing wrong with doing it over. The professionals <laughs> do it over and over and over and over and over again. They get out of the mindset that practice is a punishment. Practice is a reward. Tom Brady, who if you don't know, now you know I am a Tom Brady fan, okay? I am a Tom Brady fan. I'm not saying I'm a huge fan of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm not saying I'm in love with the Patriots. I'm saying I am a Tom Brady fan. So if he go to the the Knickerbockers next week, if he go to the Detroit West 7 Rams Pal League, I'm rocking with Tom Brady because Tom Brady's mindset to me since I've been watching him at the University of Michigan has always been hard work win hard work win and competing at the highest level it's like watching your kobe bryant your michael jordans and me being 43 i think sometimes for some of the some of the older cats like myself or the the, the aging cats whatever you want to call it the cats in my time frame that watch michael jordan and watch the bad boy pistons and the showtime lakers I believe that's why LeBron gets a knock because his mindset is not an 80s basketball player's mindset. And a lot of times people say he don't have that killer instinct, that Mamba mentality. He's more so want to get his teammates involved than taking a shot. He don't have to be the man because he might feel like I'm already the man. And I think that might be the knock on him. And here's the thing that happened. Something has happened in your life where somebody put a knock on you too. And that knock is still in your mindset. That, that, that bump is still in our mindsets. Again, I used to carry the mindset of what I used to be around with me because somebody else placed that on me. But when I got into this information, when I got into this material, when I got into this, this behavioral science breakdown by Dr. William Marstow, how our, how our, how our characteristics De defines and shape our mindset and you act a certain way one way or another because one part of your mindset is stronger than the other none of these characteristics are good bad or indifferent but one of them is definitely your superpower one of them is definitely your superpower and it helps you be you the best version of you and a lot of us don't know what that is we don't know what that mindset is for our superpower and we go along with our, and everyone else mindset and never setting our mind truly free I'm just quiet in silence because it's so silent and it's like, okay, uh, put a thumbs up if you agree. It's just quiet in silence and it's just getting used to it, especially not bouncing off my wife. That's what's so great about, you know, preparing and then being able to speak extemporaneously because you have to show your true world emotion you. Podcast and, and 
podcasting and social media is becoming almost fake now. What it, you, what it was probably created for, it doesn't seem to be now because everybody's found a way. How do you make money from it? And anytime somebody is just doing something to make money, the art of it, the love of it isn't, even, isn't there anymore. You know what I'm saying? So the mindset now when you get on social media, if you see sometimes people older, they might say that, you know, social media is the devil. Social media is not good. I can't get into that because you've seen a few people who who made it look bad because their mindset was only to benefit for themselves. Again, it goes back to the to the LeBron James, you know, comparison to the Michael Jordan. You see a few people. It's eight billion people in the world. You see a few million people who may think that. You know, LeBron James is not the greatest. Michael Jordan is because of his mindset and his style of play. But then you have another few million people who think LeBron James is the greatest. And then there was those millions like us. I'm like, ain't nobody talking about Kobe Bryant. We just going to skip past Kobe. But it's all about the mindset and what you see for yourself. So as I go back and forth and I go in and out and share little stories with you, and talking about this this extreme execution lifestyle that it got me in and how it helped me to break down my mindset every day and, and actually learning who I am. And I was telling you about the four type of characteristics and what they represent. <clears throat> and the D stance is decisive. And I'm going to paint a different picture for you in that. Decisive. How you deal with problems. How you deal with problems in life and your, your ideal for solving them and getting results. And then that I stands for interactive. How you deal with people. How do you really deal with people? How do you navigate and handling and showing emotions to interacting with people in your life? And then that S is stability. That's that pace. How do you like to deal with the pace in your life? The persistence and the steadiness. How do you like to deal with that? Even tone, mono, pace, to set somebody else set the pace. And then it's that C, which is cautious. That cautious is that procedure. You want everything to be set in place. For example, if I walk in here, if I'm super cautious and I'm, next, I'm not extemporaneous and I have my notes down to a T and I look at it the first time I came to the studio, Julia had it set up this way. I need it set up this way to perform because I'm cautious. I need everything to be in order. It might throw my mindset off when it's time to record if it's not in that order. It's like when you hear about stars and entertainers, I think it's called a rider or maybe their trailer or something like that. What do you want in your rider? I want Skittles. I want Voss water. I want this. They're cautious in a certain way or superstitious in the way that their mindset says, if I eat this handful of Skittles and I take two sips of this Voss water, then I'm going to have a good performance. It's just something that we set in our mind. And where did that come from? It goes back to earlier, Dr. Bruce Lipton said our minds were programmed. A lot of the superstitions and the beliefs that we have come something that was programmed based on what we've seen our family do, what we've seen our grandparents do, what we've seen someone in the church do. So a lot of those times, they don't even, again, they don't even come from you. It doesn't even come from you. So it's just things that happen in your past. So it makes you cautious that you won't eat certain things. You don't do certain things. It makes you look at certain procedures. But you're like, okay, all that makes sense. That, that, which one is my superpower? Which one am I good at? What do I do? I want to paint the picture like this. I want you to think, at it, think about it as if you're on an airplane. And on the airplane, there are four major people to make this airplane operational. You have the pilot, which is that D. That's a decisive person. His mission in life is to get the pilot from one location to the next, from Austin to Dallas. That's all he care about. You rarely even see the pilot. You rarely see the pilot. He may come out in the beginning if you just happen to get on a plane early enough and, and wave his hand at you and say hi, or you might catch the pilot at the end. But he had one mission. That's to get you from one location to the next. That's his superpower. That's what he do. But once you get on the plane and you pass the cockpit and they close the doors, you are warmly greeted by the flight attendants. Hey, how's it going? How can I help you, sir? Here's your seat over here. Can I help you with your bag? Would you like something cold to drink? First class already sitting down. They got their Wall Street journals, USA Today. You know what I'm saying? The flight attendant is making sure that everybody is comfortable. They're definitely in their emotions and making sure everybody is uncomfortable. So they're very interactive with them. And then you have those, those stable people, the people that you never really see, but they make sure that your bags get to where you go. You have the grounds crew. 
they make sure that it's food on the plane. They make sure that the the, uh, the the latrines or the bathrooms or whatever you may call them have been cleaned out and the waste is gone. They make sure it's fresh pillows. They make sure everything that that plane needs to be operational is on the plane. So the grounds crew makes sure everything is stabilized. And then you have the person that's cautious who you never see. You don't have a reason to see him because if you see him, it's probably not good, which is the air traffic controller. That's the guy that sits up way in the tower and he says, you know, on runway left 789, flight number Alpha 2670, you're clear for takeoff. Hit you with one of those. So he's controlling the whole flow. He's following the procedure and which way it posed to go, which way it should go. And when you look at that, I just used it as four different individuals. But put yourself in a, in a position of those individuals. Maybe you are the pilot. Maybe you're kind of daring. Maybe you're driven the way you want to get things taken care of. Maybe your preference for taking care of problems is getting it done right away. And for some people, their mindset, that doesn't work for them. They have to think about it. They need to slow it down. They're more methodical. But maybe that's just the way you do it. You, you go straight after it. Maybe when it comes to handling problems and you're, a, you're, you're more like the flight attendant, such as I am, I'm a flight attendant. I'm a, a 99I, which is a flight attendant, and a 99D, which is a pilot. So I'm heavy in my emotions, but I want to get it done right away, and patience is not a virtue for me. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. My mindset says it can change. But what I learned in being a flight attendant and being in my emotions it takes me back to a conversation I was having with Cam a couple of weeks back about saying, OK, I need to know what we're doing here because I get in my emotions and I don't want to mix business with friendships and building because I get in my emotions. And as a flight attendant, sometimes you can get in your emotions. And sometimes what people say, they don't necessarily mean it in the way you take it because you're being over emotional. And sometimes your emotions being able to talk so openly and so transparently and being able to give that extra positive energy to someone else is a blessing to you. But you have to know who you are. And then that grounds crew member, you may truly enjoy someone else setting the pace. You may truly enjoy someone else setting the pace and just helping them succeed and helping them shine. It's like when I look at Corey and I look at Blake, they would probably be more of a grounds crew member to me, more so making sure the, 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 the podcast is stable and everything is flowing. They come in at a certain time. The pace has already been set. Julian has already got most of the stuff laid out. They're both checking his back. Corey is checking. I think this light should be here. Blake comes in. You look good on sound, but the pace is already set so now Julian can as I said earlier go off and do one of those multiple producer jobs he has his ground crews members Corey and Blake on the backup on the boards and making sure everything go and they are perfectly fine with being in that position because the the, the best version of them is helping me look the best version of me helping Julian look the best version of him on his production. And why I say the best version of them, because they're sitting up there like, yo, you at seven minutes, yo, sound come up, yo, light go this way. So they're doing everything that they need to do to make sure that the picture looks good and everything's stable to make sure we sharp, make sure we sweet. So that's what a grounds crew member is. There's nothing wrong with that. You that support, you that backbone, you help the crew go forward. But then as being a grounds crew member, you have to also understand to make sure you push you just as much as you push everyone else. And that's something that a grounds crew member could do. They could get so used to being on the pace of other people that they don't set a pace for themselves. And then their mindset becomes, I'm only here to help other people. And then you grow resentful and you grow mad and you see everybody else eating, everybody shining, and everybody winning. And you're like, yo, what, what happened to me? I, I did that. Well, you have to also make sure you get your mindset right to put yourself forward. And then last but not least, she has that cautious person, the air traffic controller. That's that person that's just by the book. All rules are made to be followed. OK. We just, we just buy the book. This is the procedure. This is what's been set in place. Or you go to one of those jobs and they tell you, especially in the Army, this is the way we've did it for years. We've been doing it like this. We're going to keep doing it like this. When we go out on the run, we go to the left. We take two steps. We say, um, 
double time march and we take off why change it now this is the procedure this is the way it's gonna go so they don't break procedure and they almost need that procedure it's that procedure that someone else put in position for them they want the facts they want the identifying facts they don't they don't want just your bright idea storytelling i like me and the visionary they need the facts they need you to break it down for them and and really thinking about giving you a couple examples of those type of people your people that's pilots who who driven who want to get it done when i think about some of the great pilots and the company that you may be in characteristics of a pilot natural born leaders straightforward fast-paced energetic you know some of the most famous pilots in the world michael jordan when you think michael jordan you think greatness we just was having that i, w I was just having that conversation about LeBron James and Michael Jordan. But when you think that, and I talked about the mindset Michael Jordan has compared to LeBron James, Michael Jordan, you heard the stories, especially if you watched, uh, what was that show he just had on ESPN? The, uh, the Bulls 30 for 30 documentary or whatever he did. But when you think about that and his competitiveness, most of his teammates, they talked about his desire to win was so great. You know, he would, he would, punish you in practice you know he would definitely punish you in practice but his mindset was I am going straight forward I am high paced I am energetic and if you don't want to deal with that you don't want to be here I was listening to an interview the other day with Kobe Bryant he said the exact same thing if you don't want to bring 120 percent at the at the court then I don't want to play with you at practice that's just some people mindset and that's the mindset of a pilot i want to move forward i want to get it done i want to help you get to your destination trey for example pilot what did he say i'm a connector i put people together and i'm gone he first introduced me to y'all he put us together we talked for 30 minutes and we ain't seen him again since the art show but he like this is what i do that i put people together i connect people and i move on to the next destination because i'm steady taking flights now me on the other hand now that i'm together with people i'm like okay i got some stuff that's inspirational that'll help you think that'll make you think that want to change your life like i'm sharing my emotions and it's i'm able to connect with people my wife on the other hand when she come in y'all probably know by now okay when i need to talk email stuff business stuff i'm gonna talk to her because he's already said it this is what she do she a c she an air traffic controller she want to know a b c one two three and if you show me that i'll get you that and we'll be successful me learning this tool me getting into extreme execution me understanding the four characteristics of the mindset help me to set my mind on a different pace help me to allow myself not before i would begin to think about writing anything down help me to allow myself to tap into my gift to tap in what i do well connect with people and believe that i can go on this camera click record and start speaking about my life to help inspire your life all because I was willing to change my mindset and take the information that I have to set my mind in a different direction. What if you had the information to, to, to help you know what your superpower was? What, what if you had that information that would help you to take from taking two steps back to taking those two steps, three steps, four steps forward? From, from keeping you with the people who don't uplift you, who don't promote you, to, to surrounding you with the people who empower you who believe in you what if you knew just for you not who they said you were supposed to be but who you actually are who you designed to be who you called to be what draws out to you my mindset always knew that i was connected to people and i enjoyed serving people and giving back to other people that's why I did some of the jobs I did. Most of us already know what our mind is set to, but people who has told you what your mind is set to isn't you. Follow up on it, and out of that five, maybe two will be serious about it. Because a lot of people are not serious about setting their mind free because their minds are so set. What was poured in their mind very, very young when it was freely <laughs> given to them, but they don't want to let it go. Because sometimes to, to truly know who you are, you got to go through the dark times. And going through the dark times can be hard. Going through the dark times can be hard. But it's in the dark times where we don't lose our mind. It's there where we find our mind and we truly set our mind free 
and we become the person that we want to be, who we see. And that could change for you daily because, again, you're either growing or you dying, G. I don't want to still be speaking the same in the next six to eight weeks. I want to make sure I'm more on point and I have a strategy and, I, and I'm giving you value that you can understand and digest easily. I'm still going to speak freely, but it's all about organizing it so you can get it easily. It's just like the lighting. If you could if you could be here and see what I see, you don't understand the transformation that's been going downtown at Paradox Studios, G. But it's all learning, and we talked about going live, and tonight we live because nobody, mind got stuck on what it used to be. And I said it, we beat Murphy Law today. I was I was almost, I almost felt like I needed to take it back. <laughs> Did I mess up by saying that? Is he going to show up? But again, we have a crew of people in here, just like someone on the airplane. I'm the flight attendant. All I want to do is connect with you and make sure y'all good. From what I'm seeing, how I'm seeing, Julian is probably rocking more like a pilot because he want to get it done. He made sure everything was set up. He kept checking the time. Then you got the, the grounds crew. And you got more grounds crew members than you got flight attendants and pilots. Why? Because the grounds crew is what makes the crew stable. It's what makes the crew stable. So when we came together like Voltron as a team, when we came together like the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, when everybody transformed like Voltron and played their role in their position, the mindset was able to move freely on Murphy, and we were able to start on time because we had already been setting ourselves up su for success for the last few weeks. We had kept planting a seed that, oh, it's all right, it's going to work out. Oh, it's all right, it's going to work out. Oh, it's all right, it's going to work out. Look, work out. If you work it, it will work out. I started to work it. I, I started to read my assessment. I started to discover who I was. I started to go through this 22-page report of my life based off a few questions that I answered. And it identified things in me in my life that I already felt in my life that I already knew was a part of my life and helped me to shape my mind and to get my life all the way and continuously right because this ain't something that you're going to do overnight. You're going to have to study it and study it, study it, study it, do wrong, do wrong, do wrong until you feel like, oh, I'm doing right. There's no losses in life. There's only lessons in life. So here's the lesson for you. Go to www. Nope, I'm not going to give you that. Go to mrpeen77 at gmail.com. In the subject heading, you can type in mindset, superpower, I want to know. And in the message box in the body, you can say, please tell me what's my superpower. If you send me that email, I will politely send you an email back telling you what information that I need from you to help you. To help you. If you really want to change your mindset and not just let 2021 be a new year with new resolutions, but you be the same you crying in 2022, let me bless you and help you and help you do some things that help me get through. It's your mindset. You get to set it free. This is a gift from me to thee. And I know that it's going to bless spiritually, emotionally, and financially, because giving is what we all called to do. What do you have to give? What What's that superpower in you? Are you the pilot? Are you ready to get the people to their destination? Are you ready to connect them to? Are, are you part of the flight attendant crew? Are you emotional you? You just want to share with everything you have to say? <laughs> Are, are you part of the stability crew? Are you part of the grounds crew? You want to make sure you carry in the bag? You want to make sure we got gas so the jet don't lag? You want to make sure it's like when you watch a UFC fighter, they bring in the special chef, a special chef, and his mindset is either cut weight, gain weight, or, or fill him with plenty of energy so he can get through that fight oh so easily. So what part do you want to do? Are you the air traffic controller? Are you the procedure crew? Do you make sure we go through step one and two before we get to three and four so we don't have to flight attend it and keep doing it over and over again because our emotions is, you know, all over the place. So who are you? What are you called to do? 
what do you want to do and how do you plan on doing it how do you plan on becoming a better version of you if you think by chance that is something you need to do uh oh i think i broke the camera no, i'm just joking <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm just messing. I, I like to mess with people when they moving around and actually just, you know, add flair to what I feel like I'm feeling. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're entertained. So as I close with this, and I'm going to recap this this last time, talking about this last whole month, setting your mind or resetting your mind. And I talked about how it was programmed from a certain time. In week one, we talked about Dr. Bruce Lipton. And how, uh, and how it was planned from the age of zero to seven. And a lot of us live our life sometimes till we hit that doorway, that stairway to heaven, living based on what somebody else had to say, never growing in our own way. And we talked about that basic plan. But then that following week, we talked about that battle plan. And I kind of used the story when I was in Iraq. And we had a battle plan. And when things would happen, we almost we had to fall back. And we had to regroup. And we had to look at the battle that we was into. And you have to look at that battle that you going on in you. Maybe it's something that happened in school. Maybe it's something that happened at a young age in your life. Maybe it's something that somebody spoke over your life. Maybe it was a husband, a wife. Maybe you're not even that old yet. Maybe it was a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Maybe it was, you know, something that they said that you're still battling through. But you have to ask yourself. You have to get in, in touch with that I in you. Now, again, with these th these four characteristics, one of them is your superpower for you, but all four of them are a part of you. So you got to get with that I in you and get part of that, e that emotional you and say what you need to say to help yourself move forward so you can be stable in some way. Because it's going to be a time that what you went through is going to bless somebody else and help them get through. And then you'll figure out how to find an air traffic controller in you. Or get with a crew that has an air traffic controller that can put procedures in life to help you make it through. And you don't feel like you're just running around losing you. It's all part about breaking the mindset down that was bred and given to you into structuring and shaping it and molding it into the mindset that you see for you. All you have to do is send me an email. Say you ready for your superpowers. We'll do a quick little disc assessment flight assessment and tell you what your life is like as well if you're willing to grow and you're willing to move through this is what you do mr peen 77 at gmail subject line flight attendant superpower i want to know please tell any of those things will do body message whatever you need to say is cool too but just make sure you say you want to change your mindset that day and I'm going to help you. It's going to bless you in some way. Oh, that's all I have to say. I think I might be actually ending early today. Maybe not. Maybe I'm late. they like, yeah, you never early, dog. Your mindset, that's what you think. I hope this motivation and inspiration was something for your situation to free and relax your mind as if you are on a vacation. Vacation, mind transformation. I'm out. Peace.